The ATF has just issued their criteria for when pistol braces would attach to a weapon somehow become short barrel rifles that need to be registered with the National Firearms Act. I want to talk to you about the definition just so I can walk you through it so you know how to observe and think about what you read when you read about this issue on the internet or when you watch other YouTube videos. Stay tuned, we're gonna break it down when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the US Supreme Court Bar and New York Times bestselling author. If you have not subscribed to the Four Box of Diner channel, please do so, we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. It'll make a big difference for the social media algorithms. In today's video, I just wanna talk about the definition of what the ATF appears to be arguing or stating forth in their regulation here is a short barrel rifle when you combine a weapon with a pistol brace of some sort. And I just wanna talk specifically in an easy to understand way how this breaks down. I think it'll make your life easier when you read articles about this, when you watch other YouTube channels about this with people that are far have far better knowledge than I do about the technology associated with firearms. But I wanna break down the way to understand the law as laid out uh, by these ATF regulations because I think I can do that pretty well and help you as you go to look at other materials on this topic. To begin with, the ATF issues this 293 page document and they entitle this factoring criteria for firearms with attached quote unquote stabilizing braces. Well, the definition here, the title of this uh, tells you that all of this is what I'm about to say is somewhat ambiguous and vague. Vague and ambiguous means that terms are subject to two or more reasonable interpretations that might be inconsistent. So when they're talking about factoring criteria for firearms with attached stabilizing braces, you're gonna see how it's very confusing. Nevertheless, it is the law, according to the ATF, and unless some court strikes it down or some other changes, it's going to be kind of the law that one uh, must follow. So my goal here is simply to break this down for you. To begin with, we know that in the National Firearms Act and in the Gun Control Act, there's various definitions of terms. One of them in the NFA and also uh, in the Gun Control Act is the definition of rifle. It's very understand that we look at the statutory definition of rifle because as you know, Congress passes statutes. The ATF is part of the executive branch. So the way this is supposed to work is the executive branch with its officers, including ATF agents, are supposed to follow the law given to them by Congress in statutes. So the two relevant statutes here given to the ATF by Congress is the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act, most specifically the National Firearms Act because it is the ATF's contention that these rifles with, that these, these pistols with stabilizing braces somehow become rifles. So let's start with the statutory definition of rifle, and then I'm gonna to go to the regulatory definition of rifle. And again, it's all about breaking down so it's very easy to understand. So the statutory definition of rifle under the NFA is this. <clears throat> the term rifle means a weapon, it's a weapon first, designed or redesigned, made or remade, okay? So a weapon, number one, Designed or redesigned, made or remade, which just means it kind of exists, right? A weapon that exists, as I understand, that's how I would read this, part three, element three, intended to be fired from the shoulder. Intended to be fired from the shoulder. And then it carries on with the basic definition of semi-automatic rifles. The critical part of that definition is a weapon designed or redesigned, made or remade, a weapon, number one, designed or redesigned, made or remade, number two, and three, and most importantly in some respects, intended to be fired from the shoulder. Those are the three parts. That's the statutory definition. What ATF has done here is they're trying to argue that pistols, handguns, if you attach a brace of some sort, stabilizing brace, pistol brace, whatever you want to call it, to the back of that pistol somehow converts it into a short barrel rifle. As you know, 
all modern day handguns, semi-automatic handguns and the like, have rifling in their bore, which is the inside part of the barrel where the bullets come out of. Um, and because there's rifling, it's rifled, right? Um, so therefore, if you attach a stabilizing brace to it, according to ATF, that could become a short barrel rifle. And because short barrel rifles are required to be registered as NFA, under, NFA items, uh, you would have to register it and pay a tax. So now I want to talk to you about the regulatory definition that the ATF has put forth and how to understand. I want to show you how to break it down by elements. Elements, okay? So in their, on page 288, if you want to look at the 293 page document, look at page 288. On page 288, they define rifle as the following. For the purposes of this definition of rifle, the term from the statute, the term rifle from the statute I previously read that includes the terms or words, quote, designed or redesigned, made or remade, and intended to be fired from the shoulder, right? That is the language from the statute I just read you from the NFA. That language is from the statute. Now, what does ATF say about that language? They say that falling within that language shall include, here's what they say, that language shall include, shall include, but not be limited by, right? They're saying shall include a weapon, again, a weapon element one. You got a weapon that is equipped with an accessory component or other rear world uh, attachment, e.g. a stabilizing brace. So two elements right there. Element number one, a weapon. Element number two to be satisfied, a stabilizing brace, which they call it an accessory component or other, or other attachment. And three, that stabilizing brace or that rearward attachment provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder. All right, so again, three parts so far, three elements to be satisfied in the to the ATF to be a rifle. A weapon that has a stabilizing brace attached and that stabilizing brace provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder. Plus, because it also goes on to say provided other factors as described in paragraph two indicate. So plus the fourth element is the factors found in paragraph two. Now in paragraph two, there are six factors to consider. And this is where it becomes really kind of in my view, sleazy on the part of the ATF. Those three elements plus a fourth element, but the fourth element is actually six different factors. Now, these six factors, uh, which I will not read to you, I'll just, I won't read verbatim to you. These six factors in paragraph two state that when a weapon provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder, the following factors shall be considered they're not saying it's dispositive. They're just saying you're going to consider it in determining whether the weapon is designed, made, or intended to be fired from the shoulder. So this is what's being considered by the ATF to determine whether or not you go to jail. One is, and these are the six factors on top of the initial three I just gave you. One, whether the weapon has a weight or length consistent with the weight or length of similarly designed rifles. Two, whether the weapon has a length of pull measured from the center of the trigger to the center of the shoulder stock and so on and so on, including buffer tubes along the buffer tube, uh, receiver extension. Three, whether the weapon is equipped with sights or a scope with eye relief that require the weapon to be fired from the shoulder in order to be used as designed. Four, whether the surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder is created by a buffer tube, receiver extension, or any other accessory component or other rear world a uh, rear word uh, attachment that is necessary for the cycle of operations. Five, the manufacturer's direct and indirect marketing and promotional materials indicating the intended use of the weapon and information demonstrating the likely use of the weapon in the general community. So these six factors are factors. But the problem is that they don't tell you, the ATF doesn't tell you that if you meet the first three criteria, the first three elements, meaning it's a weapon with a stabilizing brace, and that stabilizing brace has a surface area that allows the weapon to be fired, how many of the next six factors have to be met before it's a short barrel rifle, according to the, NF, uh, according to the ATF? Is it just one of the six factors? Is it two out of the six? Do you, if, if, if it's four out of the six is not consistent 
with it being a short barrel rifle, does that mean you win? Um, do the do you have to have all six? Just one of the, I mean, what does it mean? Oh, what if you have three on the one hand and three on the other? How does all this factor? And they don't tell you what it means. They just say, these are things that we're going to consider. And one of the critical things that I think really takes this out, it makes it crazy, is factor number five, which is, quote, the manufacturer's direct and indirect marketing and promotional materials indicating the intended use of the weapon, close quote. How on, you, how on earth are you going to know all the different ways that perhaps the company that you bought your stabilizing brace from or your pistol with a brace from, how are you going to know all the different ways they marketed directly or indirectly to people all across the country? Did these companies have YouTube ads? Uh, did they advertise on the radio? Did they have brochures? What did they say, if anything, at SHOT Show? How are you ever going to know? And yet this is a factor that can be used against you to put you in jail. So again, bottom line is this. As you look at everyone else's YouTube channels, as you are looking at articles on the pistol brace issue, just keep in mind that there's four elements that you have to focus on according to the ATF. It has to be a weapon with a stabilizing brace, number two. That stabilizing brace has to have a surface area that allows you to shoot from the shoulder. And three, it's one or more of the six criteria or six factors set forth in part two. So there's part one and part two. According to the ATF, you have to satisfy both to be a short barrel rifle. Again, part one is weapons, stabilizing brace, surface area in that stabilizing brace that allows you to shoot from the shoulder. And then the other part, the fourth element, is one or more of those six elements in part two of the definition. So yes, it's very confusing. I think these factors make it very difficult for anyone to know whether or not uh, what you perhaps have in your closet is short barrel rifle or not, according to the ATF. And I don't think that's how law should work. You really need to know what the law is ahead of time so you can make sure you comply with it. And we're not even getting into the fact that the ATF, you know, changed a lot of their views on these topics by 180 degrees and what that might mean legally. We've talked about that in other videos, but we won't uh, belabor the point in this one. Okay, I hope you learned a little bit something here today. I hope this helps you as you analyze the, the literature and other discussions uh, across the internet and beyond. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner, please do so. We'd appreciate it. And we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.